everyone. Bill Fairman with Carolina Capital Management. I'm here with my lovely sister, Wendy Sweet. Hello. And the guy that does all the work around here, yeah. guys, <laughs> Jonathan Davis. All the brain lifting, right? So before we get too far into this. Please like us. Please share, share us. Where can and they reach us? Tell all your friends. You can reach us at carolinahardmoney.com. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that I was right on that. I had and, to take it away from him. He took it away we, from me on that, the last That's one. right. And, and we talk a lot about <laughs> investment. So it's very important that we do our disclaimer. We are not trying to sell any kind of stock or security. This is educational purposes only. There is <laughs> risk with any investment. So make sure you read the PPM yeah, and consult like your order. financial advisor before you invest in any type of investment. Yes, what he said. Uh, and by the way, your mileage may vary. That's right. Right? That's right. So anyway, <laughs> folks, welcome to the show. We have a great guest with us today. He's actually one of our investors. Mm -hmm. Jim is a dentist up in Michigan, currently in the warm part of Michigan where it only snowed today. <laughs> <laughs> right? Jim, welcome to our show. It's Jim Rocker, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. We've known Jim through a mastermind. Freedom Dr. Founders. David Phelps puts mm -hmm. this on. It's called Freedom Founders. Mm -hmm. And we've known him and his wife for uh, a few years now. What? Th three or four? About three years now. About yeah. three years. Maybe going on for coming up in the summer, I think. Awesome. Yeah. Excellent. Awesome. Yep. So uh, g give me a little background, Jim. Were yeah. you born and raised in that same yep. area? Yeah, so I was uh, I was born and raised here in, in mid Michigan, a little town called Grand Blanc, big, big white they used to call it back in the in the days when the <laughs> French French found it. But it's a nice community. Used to be a famous golf tournament there. People know about Warwick Hills. I used to live I lived right there on the golf course, so got to meet a lot of cool people back in the day. And then I grew up there. My wife I met when I was ten. <laughs> and she was two streets over from me. And I used to love her dad because her dad owned about a hundred Arby's. <laughs> One I of my favorites. Arby's. Yeah. yeah. So I love yeah, the he, Reuben. <laughs> he, he was one of the guys involved with the beef and cheddar and the Jamocha shake, just FYI. Wow. Anyway, so I've known her my whole life, but we didn't date till we got to college. So long story short, I went to the local high school she went to private high school and then we ended up when I was in dental school at Michigan she was in nursing school and she moved in and our apartment doors hit and then we started, wow. to, <laughs> and started dating but I grew up in Michigan and I went to Michigan State my major was in uh, economics I, I got out of dental school a year early I applied to the University of Michigan a year early and got in a year early so uh, wow. I thought that was a smart idea. I, my idea was to defer that and go skiing for a year. My dad said, no, you're not doing that. So, <laughs> so I was one of the youngest people in my class, which was good and bad at, at the time. But I was a, kind of a person that is going to go over and beyond to learn what I want to learn. And didn't waste a lot of time on the minutia. So there's a lot of that in school, I thought. I also grew up, my dad was, is a financial advisor. So, oh, wow. Um, yeah. So he was, uh, he was in stocks and bonds and, and private money managers in New York and around the country. Got to learn a lot about that side of investing, especially when I got out of school and knew that I had, I had capital I needed to do something with. And so that was kind of where I got to meet, you know, David Phelps and Peter Farmers as well. But my wife and I are Christians, and we also determined that life is too short to just sit around and do things for yourself. And we, we just got this, I think the Holy Spirit gave us this bug that we needed to adopt. I grew up with nine adoptive cousins. So wow. it was normal for me to have people in our family that weren't, you know, biological, I'll say. Right. But that journey took us, you know, to Vietnam and where and this and that. The only place that would adopt to us was Guatemala mm. because we already had five children. China and Guatemala would adopt and 
we just prayed about it and we decided we should adopt from Guatemala. We adopt our first daughter that we were going to adopt. There were some problems, which meant that they didn't know where the mom was. It halted the process. Long story short, we ended up adopting another uh, daughter named Hope because they, they said we'd never get Amelia, which was, was the first girl. And we spent probably seven to eight years trying to get Amelia. Back and wow. forth, corrupt, corrupt lawyers, corruption. Wondering why God had us there. Should we just forget about her? Blah, blah, blah. And in doing those eight or nine trips to Guatemala, we had people that wanted to go with us. And, we, and that's what birthed our mission trips that we do every summer. We take about 100, 130 people every summer to Guatemala on mission trips. And then that's wow. birthed into a feeding center and an orphanage and a mentoring program, all of which came from a door that I think God, I thought was closed to this one little girl that took this long to adopt, who's doing great now, by the way, is now become, you know, an awesome part of our family, an awesome story, and pretty much the, the beginning of all of our mission work in Guatemala. And truth be told, my first time in Guatemala, I wanted to get out and never, and never go back. <laughs> and just how things work out that way, uh, that wasn't what God's plan was. So that's my background in my life. In the finance world, for me, when I met Bill and Wendy, I knew for a fact, after talking to them, I could trust them. We had the same faith. And the one thing I think about is, who do I know, like, and trust? Mm. That's who I'm going I'm to invest with. And so we, anybody who has any capital at all, you got to do something with it. You can't just keep it in the bank. You lose money in the bank, obviously. Sure. <laughs> inflation, and inflation and taxes and what have you. My dad's side of that, back in the heyday of the 80s and 70s, 80s, 90s, insider trading that they could do was legal. Mm. They sent their money managers into Motorola, for instance. Or, I mean, I could, you know, Corrections Corp was a great, was a big, huge stock back in the day. Mesa Airlines, we, we knew was ahead of time what was going to happen. And so it was really, it wasn't really investing. It was, you got the inside information, you made a lot of money. Back in the day, it was legal and you could do that. If you, if you, did, if you sent people to the company and you got some good people on board, on site to do their due diligence, you could make an educated guess to make a lot of money in the stock market. Those wow. days are gone, Yeah, which, which kind of sent me along to David Phelps and Freedom Founders. And the cash flow method, buying, buying things low and, and, and making money on the buy, you can still do it in real estate. Right. And so that attracted me to that. So now I started to, with an impending correction coming and the casino, I think the Wall Street is now because of uh -huh. all sorts of different things that I know about blockchain and what have you and, you know, Ray, Ray Dalio's metrics on how to fix stocks. I don't feel like that's a place we should have our money right now. Right. And so that's kind of where I, I met with you guys. And I, I'm in your fund. I love, the, I love the fund. I would say, I, actually, like it was back in the day in the stock market, you could talk to people. And like mm -hmm. well, I can talk to you guys. In the good and the bad, it feels like even things that were a little bit tricky in, in years past, we could count on you to, to have our back. And you don't really find that anywhere, really. Awesome. Um, especially Thank you. On Wall Thank you for those kind yeah. of words. We appreciate that. Well, I really appreciate that. Yeah. So I'll be a lifetimer because when I saw what you would do for your investors, nobody else would really do that. Awesome. Yeah. Thank so, you. So, wow. That's so nice. And that was yeah. completely, we didn't ask for that and we're not paying him to say these things, right? <laughs> well, the, the check is <laughs> in the we mail, are, actually. Although we are paying him, but it's coming from the fund. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, I have a mentorship program that I, and I speak down at the dental school and it's amazing how sad it is of mm -hmm. the new graduates coming out. Uh, I'll just say out of the University of Michigan, you know, dental school with 65% of them have over $300,000 in debt. That, how mm -hmm. do they do that? How do they do that? And they don't know what to do with their money. And out of the 40 presenters, I was the only dentist. The rest were financial people, you know, Merrill Lynch, insurance, what have you. And so your model, what you guys have here, and even in our meetings where we can chit chat, break things down, talk about in a, in a way that makes sense to people like us, you know, it's, it's really a breath of fresh air. And I, I'm finding that 
there's a niche out there even for young professionals that just don't have any idea what to do once once they get out. But right. now they're getting out with so much debt. It's it's even that something you know. But I think real estate is. You, know, you always say, well, there's so many different ways to do real estate. You know. Right. So that's my two cents or whatever. Maybe too much you want to hear about, but that, <laughs> that's where I come from. No, I love it. Well, the analogy I like, I always like to use with real estate is it's a hedge against itself. You can make money, like say if you're in a stock where you buy low and sell high, uh, same thing with real estate, you can get it at a good price and sell it at a profit. If that doesn't happen, because it doesn't happen all the time, markets don't always go up, sometimes they go down. But for the, you know, the long haul, real estate is going to appreciate in most markets. And again, every market's a little different mm -hmm. about three, three and a half percent a year over, you know, a 30 year period. Mm -hmm. It's not always going to go up in a straight line, but if they do go down, like what happened in the 08, 07 and 08 side of things, when the values just plummeted, know, plummeted right. We, we love to say this, the house doesn't care how much it's worth as long as it's making money. So now consider this, you have a stock that has an upside mm -hmm. and when it's going down, it pays you a dividend. <laughs> so if, if you can turn that asset into an income producing asset, it doesn't matter if the value doesn't go up because it's, you're it's producing a it? cash flow at right. the same time. So right. it's a hedge against itself. Now I am very curious as to why you got a degree in economics. <laughs> I'm assuming it was because of your dad's background. And then did you just uh, decide that what made you decide to go into dentistry after you got a degree in economics? <laughs> well, my dad was a CPA and a financial advisor. My mother was a dental hygienist and mm -hmm. my dad worked every day. He worked every day and never had a day off. And I didn't want to do, do that job. Mm -hmm. But also back in the day, I, I, I learned that if you really buckle down, you could get into dental school a year, a year early. So mm -hmm. I did all my pre-dental stuff ahead of time, some in the summer. And, but I did not want to be a biologist or a chemist if I didn't get into dental school. Right. So I thought, I, I know I could, I could go on, come alongside my father. I, could, I, could, I would probably would have wanted to be a money manager. I had an inn in New York where I could work with, a firm out there that actually, ironically, uh, David Phelps, his wife, it was involved with as well. So just a lot of neat stuff. So that was kind of why I went into it. I liked it better. And I had all my stuff done for, you know, dental school. Then I, I really kind of worked on trying to get in early. I applied to 10 schools. At the time, University of Michigan was number one in the world. It's usually number, it's usually North Carolina, Michigan, or Harvard. They just keep switching around. Huh. And so I got into there and I was like, man, I, I better go. It made financial sense to go because I was saving a year worth of uh, tuition. But truth be told, my father paid for my all my education through his his mastery of the stock market and my sister. My sister is also a, a dentist and a nurse anesthetist. Wow. So very highly educated sister. And so that was that was kind of what I, I was brought up with all that stuff. But you know, like you were saying, you were saying, Bill, there, there was no real tax hedge. There really wasn't a tax hedge I didn't see in the stock market, right. as you see with, with you know, real estate. And I couldn't really tell you what I had, my stock, if I was in a mutual fund, what was I really invested in? I don't know. Right. Um, right. You don't really know what you're invested in. And things change too. Like for instance, with the stretch IRA recently, a lot of my dad's estate planning hedged on, and of course, you know, Eddie Speed and Martha Speed and, and, their, and their deal is, to stretch that out mm -hmm. to the grandkids. Now that's gone. You know, it's a 10 year, right. 10 year deal now. All happened in two weeks to the last week of December. Wow. Government has a lot more control over the market than they do over, let's say, a, a little, you know, bedroom community of, you know, of uh, cash flowing, you know, rentals. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so, so that, I think that might answer your question, but that's kind of sure. how I went from economics to, you know, dental school. Yeah. Well, I'm assuming as you're mentoring these uh, young folks that are getting ready to graduate, the first thing you tell them is you got to get that debt paid off because saving money is not doing you any good if you've got all this debt hanging. Right. Out. The first thing they need to do is get that money machine cranked up inside that dental practice. Try not to put yourself in more debt by opening up your own. Are you, are you talking to them about becoming associates first and uh, make money that well, way? Or? And that's a great question because... 25% of that class will go to corporate dentistry. Hmm. 
every year uh, it drops by 7% who will go in to be a entrepreneur private dentist that can own the real estate. And so the, the dilemma for them is, do you want to be a W-2 earner the rest of your life and have right. zero mm -hmm. say in what you can possibly run through your gray area practice expense sheet? Right. Every CE class, your cell phone, you know, so there is, there might not be a great, a great idea to not come in and alongside maybe a mentor dentist, like David's book, The Apprentice Model. Mm -hmm. I would agree with him. Find the dentist that you know that's, that's doing it right. Come in and associate with that person, learn how they do it, and then maybe buy in, have an equity share into that practice, and then start running some, some of your expenses through. All the while, I think you could pay off your pay off your debt. You go corporate, you're a W-2 earner, you're working like a dog, you have nothing to say at the end of five years. And because truthfully, these dentists get out of school and they have to service their debt. They have to get life insurance, disability insurance, car insurance, a car maybe, place to live, not have a roommate, and maybe they're married, maybe they got it, you know, they don't have kids. So it just keeps becoming this golden light cuffs, I call them, the, right. the, the handcuffs of life that you can never get out from underneath them unless you can create some passive income, you know, some Robert Allen, you know, multiple streams of income, right? where you don't, you, it isn't just your hands. So I would almost flip it. I kind of do what Dave Van Horn says, or what you always say, Bill, is maybe get a rental property and mm -hmm. have that rental property pay off your, your student loan. Right. So maybe have that, in essence, you know, buy your car. So that's what I tell them. I tell my kids, you know, if you want to buy a, you want a new car every year, why don't you buy a rental? And technically that would be your, your car loan payment. Or, that's right. Exactly. So that's what, what I'm seeing more learning from you guys is real estate is so much more than just real estate. And the normal person out there doing it on their own and not using like, like a service like you guys provide is not really real estate. It's like they're just throwing darts at a wall, you know. They're trying to find some house and do it themselves. You can't do that. Right. So I think your model you guys have for us is amazing. It's safe. And it's actually kind of fun. You can diversify over several markets in a great market. Right. You know, with, with you guys. So to me, it's, it's, it's a no-brainer. And it's just like, like us at dental school. You're not going to go do your own fillings. I hope not. Right. Maybe, maybe Bill might. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta pay he can he's talented uh, well i'm not that much of a micromanager that i'd do it myself <laughs> all right good That's he'd, good for, he'd forget what he was doing he's one of those squirrel guys squirrel <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so um, you those patients. <laughs> I, I would uh, like to get in a little bit more of your mission work if you don't mind how can other people get involved yeah. So you can always, you know, email me and I can, I can put that in, in the, in the notes if you want, but are, are you have my email? Right. We also have a charitable foundation called transformingfutures.org. And we have five board members that are some amazing people that not got me, other people that have done some amazing things in the business world. And uh, I won't mention what they've done, but they've done quite well that have, are able to organize this really cool process where we have a feeding center, let's say in mm -hmm. Guatemala, we, fi we, we feed 500 kids a day. Wow. And to me, that's the greatest thing that I, if I don't do anything all day today, if I can, you know, pay my, whatever, the, you know, it's, it's, it's not that much money really. And so anyway, so that's something that we, we do and it's called transformingfutures.org. We also partner with a company called, or an organization called foreverchangedinternational.org, and that's where the orphanage is. Um, but they, we kind of marry those two, those two entities, and pretty much you contact me, you come on, on a trip. We like you, we're also organizing uh, short trips where you can come and see what we're doing, like a weekend, maybe a four-day weekend trip. We're, we have a meeting uh, this Sunday about that. Our Guatemala organizers in, in town this week for a big fundraiser. And so what I like about it is it's, it's grassroots. There's really almost all the money is going just to feeding people. Mm -hmm. A little bit goes to servicing some of the people we have working in Guatemala and mostly just to try to create, you know, meals that are going to be nutritious, but yet cost effective. Right. Trying to teach them English because English gets them a better job. 
trying to keep them safe when they come out of their orphanages or mentorship program, teaching them uh, job skills. And the one question people ask is, why don't we do that here in the U.S.? Well, we actually do. We, we have a, a homeless clinic in, in Flint, Michigan, north of us, that we do service as well. And wow. uh, that is cool, too. I mean, it's sad, but it's cool to be able to kind of love on those people. And quite truthfully, the homeless population here, about one-third of them maybe are schizophrenic. One-third are have some drug, drug issues, but about one-third are just down and out. And the way they've come to that part in life, I mean, that could happen to almost anybody. Yeah. So, yeah. so anyway, I, that's kind of the way, probably contacted me by email or those organizations is probably the way that I would recommend that. Awesome. Well, thank, thank you for asking, though. Sure. Well, I will have those listed in the in the show notes. And then on the YouTube channel, we'll have, have links to those. Okay. Well, yeah. It's great work that you do. And, you know, I've always... Charity wise, I've always just given money up until recently. I was able to go to Mexico to help build a house. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing to me because I hadn't been exposed to uh, that kind of poverty before. And anytime I'd gone out of the country, it, it was always to a resort. <laughs> and I was, I either got there on a boat or I got there on a plane. So I, I never got to see it firsthand. And it really is life changing when you get involved yeah. and when you, when you get home and you're, you know, you have these first world problems. They're not really problems anymore. They, they're just annoyances. Yeah. And I'm going to give you a, a quick example. And this happened to me a few days ago. I went to, I stopped by this convenience store on the way to the gym because I had just enough time. I needed to get a, a sports drink before I got to the gym. I had just enough time to get there. And as I, getting out of my car, I'm looking into the window of this convenience store and I see the, the cashier with her hands on her head, like, Oh my gosh, what did I do? <laughs> and the lady in front of her was you know, shaking her head. And I went, Oh, great. Now I'm going to be stuck in this line because you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to, it's going to take me all this extra time. That's the first thing in my head. This is going to inconvenience me another 15 seconds. <laughs> So I go to get my drink, I'm standing in line, and then, you know, I walk up to her when it was my turn, and I said, how's it going? And she said, well, I've had better days, accidentally turned on the wrong gas pump, and I had to give this lady my last $10. Oh. And I just, my head just kind of went down, and I'm going, geez, and all I was worried about was this, these extra, you know, five minutes, I'm standing here in line, and I said, well, I hope your day gets better, and I sat in my car. And I went, all right, yeah. so I grabbed my wallet. That was God talking to I you. Took, I, took, <laughs> I took two fives out of my wallet. I walked right back in. I set it on the counter in front of all the people that were lined up. And I went, look what I found in the parking lot. Somebody must have lost this. And I'm sure it's going to go to the right person. And she was, her jaw just dropped down. And that made me feel, that made me feel so much better. I'm yeah. sure it helped her. But those kind of things, when you see this, firsthand in other countries it just changes your whole life perspective so yeah. anyway I, I know you know I just got back from Africa we're doing some work in Africa for an orphanage and a, a hostel that we're building there when I got back this last time just getting in the shower I thought wow I have a shower to get into <laughs> and then I turned on the water and I thought there's water coming out of the faucet <laughs> and then I thought and it's warm. <laughs> it was, yeah. you don't, you don't think about, you know, those little things that are just so taken for granted, you know, for us that there are people yeah. even in this country that don't have the ability to do things like that. And I think it's mm -hmm. important that we all, you know, just keep that at the forefront of our minds and yeah. what we're doing and how, you know, how truly blessed and rich we are even yeah. the even the poorest of poor in our country are still still have more than than people in a lot of some of the other countries that are there but very true well just, well they say if you have a house and two cars you're in the top 5% of the world in, in in wealth right and i feel like we need to be aware of that i know for me when i'm in guatemala one thing that struck me last time i was there was the feeding center we have is next to next to the big guatemala dump you might have heard about famous but There'll be kids that there'll be like a eight-year-old bringing in bringing in a three-year-old wow. to eat, 
And when you clean their plates up, when they're leaving, there never is there anything left on any plate. Nothing. Wow. Not even, I mean, it, they are cl as clean as you could clean them. And I think about when I get back here to the U.S., I, for me, my thing was I went to Subway and a lady was complaining about didn't have enough black olives on her sandwich. And then, you know, there was, there was, there was wasn't a chicken in the soup. <laughs> And I was just like, oh, my land. <laughs> you know, my mind just went back to the, you know, they don't even give me a chance to choose what they're going to have. It's right. Just, here's what we're having today. You know, That's here's, right. Here's your meal. Um, That's right. So I definitely see what you're saying. Yeah. Well, it's awesome what you guys are doing now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's congratulations. Jonathan, that's... did you have any questions or uh, comments you'd like? Because we've been. We've been kind of keeping been Jonathan quiet poor, over here. Poor Jonathan it, it's hard for him anything. to, it's hard for either one of us to get in a word in edgeways between <laughs> us. I feel really sorry for Jonathan. No, no, I'm good. I'm, I'm enjoying listening to the stories and they're very inspirational and I appreciate them. It is. Excellent. Well, Jim, thank you so much for taking the time. I know you got the uh, patients probably lined up going, he where is that guy? He's supposed to be yanking one of my teeth out. <laughs> That's all right. Take I your can time. Hear out there. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. I'll hide in here. They're, 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 nobody will bother me in here. <laughs> Listen, I just want to, I want to just lastly, just thank you guys for helping me out in my, uh, my freedom path, the financial freedom. You're instrumental in doing that. And I appreciate your integrity and your loyalty and your honesty and your knowledge thank and you. what you're doing in your mission life and your faith life. Uh, it's, uh, it's something cool to watch and I appreciate you guys. So thank you for, I mean, I'm already beyond on with you guys, so I, it's my honor to be here. So thank you. Oh, thank you. That's so nice. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so very much. much. You know, thank we feel you. the same about you. And uh, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to be seeing you in a couple of weeks here pretty soon. Yep. yep. Have a safe trip. Uh, great seeing you. Enjoy the snow. Oh, have, no. have a wonderful day. Thank you. So, <laughs> All right. Folks, Bye. Thank you. You're, Bye -bye. you're welcome. Folks, thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget to, again, like and share. Yeah. Tell where, all your where, friends. Where can you, can you find us, Wendy? Uh, we can be found on <laughs> carolinahardmoney.com yep. and we'll have Jim's information up as well. Ab absolutely. Right. And we have some archive videos. Mm -hmm. uh, if you'd like to jump on some of those and they will be either up there or over here or down there. Somewhere you'll, on the screen. You'll see them pop up at the end of the Yeah. Video. Yeah. So uh, everyone have a great day till we see you on the next show. Thank you so much for joining us again. Really had an awesome time. I know Wendy did as well. Woohoo! So if you like what you heard and you want to listen more, what do we do? You can hit one of these. I feel like the hippy dippy weather girl because we've got a green screen going on. So we could have a cold front moving in from Virginia or, right? <laughs> oh, come on. That's funny. I don't care who you are. So you can pick any of these other shows. We have some here. We have some here. We have some here. Just pick one, test it out, right? Yeah. Also, subscribe, like, and our website is easy. www. <laughs> That's a lot of W's. <laughs> CarolinaHardMoney.com. Tell all your friends.